The new economy agenda, how many people know what that means? I have no idea myself, but okay. I do know what building and sustaining customer preference means. Uh, customers have the first problem that we face is coming into this new economy. I call it a new economy because it's, you know, it's so depressing to talk about the old one. Right? So we want to know what's happening to the category. Is the power of the category going up? Is it static? Is it going down? Right? Because if you're in a sucky category, you, by definition, suck. <laughs> Not much more we can say, is there? Right? So a lot of companies say, well, what do you mean? Our category is actually pretty. Well, no, it actually isn't that good. It used to be good, but it's not as good as it used to be. Right? So companies basically are competing first for category domination. And what has happened as customers, IT customers notably, have gotten very conservative over the past several years? Where does an increasing amount of their budget go? Existing stuff, yeah. right? Existing stuff. So, you know, they're having a big convention. Now, how come you guys are not all of the Oracle world? Yeah. Right? You know, they've got a, they a great big thing going on up there. Well, they're sucking up an awful lot of customer budget, aren't they? And what they don't suck up, SAP sucks up, and Microsoft sucks up a whole bit. And, you know, these are, there's a lot of large. Market leadership equals market power. Power originates in the category. If you're in, again, you heard it here first, if you're in a sucky category, you by definition suck. Okay? Not you personally, but you know, right? So category advantage will always precede company advantage. And what I'm able to advance my cause, in other words, I never can be number one, but I don't have to be number five anymore either. I can get to the third spot in some interesting ways. Now, we can look at those ways as category modification. In other words, I'm going to specialize in this particular aspect of this category. We hope a more healthy one rather than the less healthy one. We can talk about maybe a disruptive technology, but more likely we can talk about a disruptive business model. Maybe there's some things in that category management thing that we have done up there that aren't related to technology per se, but are re related to, you know, we, gee, you know, for a software company, you'll actually like buying our stuff. You know, we don't turn... Nice place to be. And by the way, you can't get rid of it. Right? You cannot get rid of it. ERP is the vast tapeworm of the software industry. <laughs> you can try and you can try, but it lives on. <laughs> so when we start to get back to the strategy associated with this stuff, we start asking some tough questions. Actually, they're not so tough, but we get some interesting answers of our sales and marketing executives out there. How vulnerable are you to fundamental marketplace changes? I mean, how fundamentally vulnerable are you? And how can you exploit these if they're coming up? Right? Number two, how powerful is the category that you're in? Can't be more powerful than your category. Number three, what's going on with your company? How powerful is your company? And how powerful can you be in that category? Number four, do you have the right strategy to be able to do that? And number five, does your organization really understand what it's going to take to now operate in this new world, whatever that new world is? Going back up again to question number one and, and sort of drawing a loop back to it, what's going on here? Are we, you know, on glide path or not? Okay? I want to talk now about the challenge of the solution, because that's a word that is thrown around. We're not in the products business. We're in the solutions business. <laughs> really? Jeez. Hmm. OK. So a car is a transportation solution. <laughs> if it was marketed by high tech people, it would be. OK. So once again, some key questions. And these are always fun to ask people, because uh, invariably, what we get is a lot of deer in the headlights responses to these, or a lot of, and the dirty little one, what does it really cost? Oh, well, you know, we have the lowest TCO to maximize your best ROI. What does that mean? I don't know. That's <laughs> what the marketing people told me to say. What's the lowest TCO there is? 
Yeah. Doing nothing. Right? Which is what a lot of customers have done over the past several years. Okay. So when we start to think about the solution challenge, we're really starting to think about how do we orchestrate now, with our baton in hand, how do we orchestrate this value chain that is going to result in return on investment? Yeah, there is a place for return on investment. You see, that's how markets get made for stuff, right? See, categories don't develop for things when there's not particularly good return on investment to that category, is there? That's the difference between the nice to have and the need to have, right? This, right? IBM and Microsoft have wonderful category management strategies. They just sit there and wait, and they wait, and they wait, and they see how the category emerges or wanes emerges or wanes, prospers, and then they invest. From more of a vision of where you think the market is going to be going. Hey, it was an open book test, right? <laughs> more market power, right? I get more market power, you get more market power, our category gets more market power, our companies get more market power, and we can hopefully monetize that as a result. Okay? If it can't pass that test, it's probably not strategic, is it? Right? Remember the 90s, right? Well, we had a press conference. Isn't that strategic? Right? Um, right? What's the real agenda sometimes under this seven or under this deadly sin? You know what I really like is access to your customers. Yeah. <laughs> Because I just don't have enough deal flow myself. <laughs> Unchecked executive egos. We uh -huh. never experienced this, uh, particularly in the Valley. Right? So this is, uh, you know, as I call it, boys with toys. Right? Girls too. Right? So we're going to go out and we're going to collect partners. Why? Because I think I ought to have some. <laughs> you know, and Fred down the street's got a Ferrari, and that kind of, you know, I think maybe I should have the equivalent of that, which is a partner. Well, maybe not. Okay. <laughs> so, what happens here is that we overpromise, oh, yeah, we can do all this because, you know, we're, you know, the kings of the universe or the queens, right? We overcommit, and then the poor souls that actually have to do this can't do any of it. Right? So this is just you know partnering for the sake of looking good at Comdex, which now nobody has to look good in it anymore. <laughs> Thank God. Um, how many people are really missing Comdex this year? Right? Yeah. Uh, number five, losing sight of the real customer. Right? And one of my favorites actually in Silicon Valley because we don't really care about. Customers that much, do we? Right? You know, I mean, it's all about kind of, you know, the, the, yeah, you laugh because it's true. Right? Customers are, oh, yeah, we have to go get some of those. Right? Uh, conflicting agendas, vendor A engages vendor B to cross the chasm, pitched as let's you and I partner so we can both sell something, but which really means let's you and I partner so that you can sell my stuff. Right? And this is, again, in the classic use of the channel here, this is sell in, not sell through. Right? Now, you're not necessarily transferring title, but you're transferring the responsibility, and when that falls apart, everybody's upset. Number six, in the absence of strategy, shoot from the hip. Well, that's easy. Right? We'll just do it the way I did it in my last job. Those seven assumptions or nine questions and nine assumptions, well, what is that? We'll just bundle a bunch of crap together. You know, how do you like us so far? Look what you get, right? So this is sort of like the, the, the you know, uh, software networking gear hardware as sold by Ron Popeil, right? But wait, there's more, right? Has this ever happened to you? You know, your software doesn't work, so you get software that doesn't work either to make the first part work, right? So we, we layer all that crap together, and then we show it at Comdex, right? And then finally, well, we really wanted to. The spirit was willing, but the flesh, uh, the flesh, the flesh was weak. We couldn't really do all of this stuff. Why? Well, because we have a level playing field, <laughs> right? 